So concussion is really any injury in which there is sudden jarring of the brain. And this figure here just illustrates some of the biomechanical forces that occur with concussion. But the basic idea is that there's a very rapid acceleration and then a deceleration of the brain. And this includes linear forces as well as rotational forces. And it's actually the rotational forces that in particular may be uh, injurious to the brain. Now, one misconception about concussion is that you actually have to hit your head to have a concussion. That's actually not true. Any event that jars the brain inside this very small enclosed space with the skull, like a blast wave, for example, if you're a soldier, or a whiplash injury if you're in a car accident, anything that jars the brain, even indirectly, can cause a concussion. And um, while the majority of traumatic brain injuries are due to accidents like falls, there's a very large number, 1.6 to 3.8 million sports-related concussions estimated per year in the US. And this is almost certainly an underestimate. All right, what are the symptoms of concussion? Um, so Dr. Gardner talked about loss of consciousness uh, less than 30 minutes. That's actually quite rare. Fewer than 10% of concussions are associated with loss of consciousness. But people do develop physical symptoms like headache, uh, dizziness, nausea, um, sensitivity to light and sound, cognitive symptoms like confusion, mental fogginess, slowed responses, slurring of speech, trouble with focusing or concentrating, losing memory in particular around the event, as well as psychiatric symptoms, trouble controlling one's emotions, trouble sleeping. These symptoms occur either immediately after the event or sometimes a few minutes or hours later, sometimes only when people are under stress, for example, when they exercise, do they first manifest the symptoms of a concussion. Now, the good news is that most of the time, these symptoms go away within a week or, or shorter amount of time. But about 5 to 10% of the time, the symptoms can persist for more than 10 days. And in an even smaller percentage, the symptoms can become permanent.